hi, hola, what up, yo, language. Yeah, just go with it. So language is just communication through symbols. Uh, remember that I said that letters as we know it are literally just symbols representing a sound. We arrange them in a certain way based on the rules of grammar in our society. Um, different areas have different rules, so we have to be aware of that. And that does change based on the language that you're speaking. Hereditary, um, and this is Chomsky. Babies are born 90% of the time with the exact same ability to learn a language and basic grammatical structure. What that means is I could take a baby, I won't because this would be unethical, I could take a baby from a different country that speaks a different language as a baby and plop them into an English speaking lang uh, community and they would learn that language. It does have the understanding that it's hereditary. So if you are brought up with your parents it, or your raisins, whoever raises you, you have the ability to learn that language because you're around it. It's your family. Same with grammatical structure, which is why scientifically, educationally, we should start uh, teaching different languages at a younger age. It's not that it's impossible to learn at a, an older age. It's just easier because of this ability to learn a language as a young child. Environmental, we imitate goo goo gaga, the screaming. We imitate the things around us. Again, which is why we should start teaching languages at an early age. People, want to be able to communicate. Um, it's also a way uh, or recommended that we teach infants sign language so that they can communicate prior to having the verbal understandings, the control over their verbal language. The phenems, um, that's the basic sounds that we use uh, humans can up to can produce up to 100 different sounds english only uses about 43. Um, as you can see in france uh, there is no th sound that's why they use the z, z book um, in spanish there are different sounds. They roll their R's. The double L is a Y sound. Those are different sounds. Some, some languages don't even have the sounds that we have. Some languages have 10 different words to describe a color, describe the ocean. Those sounds are specific to an area. So when we are looking at words, we have to look at the morphemes, not morphine, the medicine, the morphemes. This is um, how the word relates to, it can be how the word relates to time. So in Spanish, you might have an extra word to say. It can be um, relating to a gender of either the person or the word. We can have prefixes and, uh, and the ED. What is that called? Post, no, that, nope, we're gonna stick with prefix. How the language is created is based on the culture. You have your syntax. That is how the sentence is created. All right, so we've got subject, verb, object. Subject can also be a noun. 
the type, the way that a sentence is created. Now, I'm not an English person. I don't teach English. Um, but language as a whole depends on where you are and what you've seen over your life. Semantics. <laughs> Commas are important. Um, Alberto's, Alberto's chicken is ready to eat. The only thing I changed, Alberto's family is ready to eat. I could even add Alberto's family is ready to eat the chicken. Now in this first sentence, are we talking about that his like actual chicken cluck cluck? Or are we talking about the chicken he cooked for his family? Semantics. Word choice is very important. Same with a pause. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's eat grandma. Let's eat grandma. Inflection is important. Monotone, let's eat grandma. These are all the relationship of the language, what we're talking about, and what we're trying to say. So how do we learn language? Crying. Now, if a baby is crying, usually they're hungry, they have gone to the bathroom, or they're sleepy. It doesn't mean that's the only answers, but typically that's where we're at. Cooing. Boo, coo. Boo. Even sometimes a smile. Babbling. Ba 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 ba. They're trying they're starting to mimic what they hear. Certain sounds are easier to make than others. Depending on the child, if they're gonna say mom, 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 or dad, 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 the M sound is actually easier for an, a baby to make than the D because of the way your tongue has to touch the top of your, the roof of your mouth when you're saying da, 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 da. Mum, mum, mum. They know how to close their mouth. So certain sounds are easier. So words when they start depends on a couple things. Typically, you will have specific words about one years old. Every child is different. Between two and three, you're gonna have a, uh, it's like over a thousand words are going to be introduced and be recreated in a child. The more you read to a child, the larger their vocabulary. I'm gonna say that again. The more you read to a child, the larger their vocabulary. Also, the more you read to a child, the better their comprehension. So understanding the story. If you're like me and have a hard time comprehending stories, it takes you two or three times to get through it and understand all of the moving pieces. Comprehension is such an important part of communication. I can talk all day, but understanding the stories I'm being told is just as, if not more important. Grammar, now this can be three to five, depending on the child, depending on the home life. By about three, a child should be able to string together four to five words in a sentence. With the requirements for kindergarten, grammar and syntax and sentence structure, all of this stuff is being pushed on kids earlier and earlier. By five, 
they should at about 80 to 85% of the time be able to use correct tense, past, present, future. Um, gender, if given a stereotypical picture, but stages in development do vary from kid to kid. Oh, in the United States, especially, there's an over-regulation. So we put far too much pressure on kids to say the correct word at an early age. Is it goose, gooses, or geese? Mouse, mouses, mice. At five years old, they are, it's being pushed, but there's such an over-regulation. They mean the same thing, but which one is proper grammar? Biling bilingualism. Oh, y'all, this is becoming a big thing. And if you are in the US, I suggest you start learning a second language quick. Most people outside of the United States know more than one language, which means their brain is able to decipher languages, problem solving, all of that type of stuff with more ease. It's great for your brain development to learn a second language. It's also the number of people are also growing that are bilingual. And there's a bunch of different reasons for that. It's one of the major reasons is because the United States has such a large immigrant, migrant, whatever int you want to use. So communicating is necessary. And if we're thinking job-wise, it makes you more hireable to know multiple languages and it could possibly get you a pay raise. So if we're looking at these, we're looking at the sounds. So for this one, chin, how many different sounds are in the word ch, i, n? Habits, ha, ha, ab, it, thing. My son has, they've been doing this and it's the sound and they do it as clapping quickly. Well, that's two. So we can break it down even further. What are the different sounds in each part of the word? Same with these. So when we're looking at language, remember, it's not specific to one place. It can be different from county to county, house to house. 